Hello friends, once again I welcome you to my channel. So the last video we have seen rotate instruction. So this will be the last video from your instruction set. And this instruction set here will discuss program control instructions. These are very, very important instructions because they will change or they will alter the flow of control that is happening while executing your program, right? So under this category, we are having branch instruction, jump instruction. These two instructions already we have come across. This branch instruction basically we use whenever we go for conditional branching. So how do we implement conditional branching? Looking at the result of previous instruction. How do you check the result of previous instruction? Looking at the value of the flag content, right? Whatever flag content we are interested, that flag value will see. If the value is one, we'll take the branch, depending on the condition of the branch. Or if the value is zero, then we will not take the branch. Then JUMP, this instruction we use whenever we go for unconditional jumping, unconditional branch instruction. Without any condition check, we have to move to a particular instruction. That is my target instruction. Then we go for JMP. You have already seen this many examples of these two instructions already. See, sometimes we write branch equal to zero L1. L1 may be here or L1 may be here. So equal to zero. That means I can look at my zero flag. If zero flag value equal to one, I'm going to L1. Else I'll be executing the next instruction. That is about branch instruction. We have seen how the PC value is changed and all. Then the next one is JMP. In case of JMP, we will not see any of the uh, previous instructions results. Simply we write JM, JMP L1. So L1 is maybe here or maybe here. So we will simply jump to L1. We, uh, whenever there is a jump, it is sure that we are not going to execute next instruction. Rather, we will be going to here, right? or here, whatever is L1 is representing. Then next is skip. Sometimes we may have need to skip my next instruction that is coming in sequence. Suppose at, at address I, one instruction I'm executing, at address I plus one, my next instruction is there. And after that I plus two, my, see here I'm writing I plus one, I plus two. This does not mean my next instruction is exactly one byte or one address apart from the previous instruction. To mean next instruction in sequence, I write I plus one. Then to the next of that, it will be I plus two, right? So the SKP, that skip instruction is used in generally for sequential execution. After this, next instruction will be executed, then the next one and so on. But when we execute skip instruction, then the next instruction will be skipped and PC will be moved to the next instruction means uh, that PC content after this instruction will be pointing here. So whenever I, I am executing skip instruction, PC content will be updated by current content of PC along with the length of this instruction. Then only I can come to next at this address, right? That is skip instruction. Then another four very important instructions are there, call return. See, whenever we are doing assembly language coding, we also write functions and in our assembly language term functions are called as subroutines and to call a function in case of your high level language you simply write f1 that means the function will be called your control will move to the instruction wherever f1's code is written right from here you start executing this is call this is a function body so whenever i call this function my execution will start from here so this is how we call in high level language but in case of assembly language, we need to explicitly execute one instruction to call a function. Only writing the name of the function will not help us. So we have to write call, then the name of the function. Here name of the function means the, ad, the, first ad, the address of the first instruction of your uh, function. So I'm writing say call P1, right? So P1 is the level of the first instruction of my function. Here from here, my function code is there. My subroutine code is there. That will be executed. I'll again explain return. Return is for returning from a function. So whenever I execute return here, my control will come to this next statement. That means it will go to the statement. It will go to the next statement following the call instruction to the caller, right? Then next is compare and test. 
but before going to compare and test once again i will take up call and return instruction because these are new to us so call is used for what to call a subroutine right so see how do you write call p1 right so p1 is the uh, level of certain instruction here some instructions are there they are doing something i do not bother about that move r1 comma r2 some addition subtraction they are doing right at the end of the function return instruction is written so see whenever i write call p1 what happens after this instruction is executed definitely i am not going to execute the next instruction where i will go i'll go to the this instruction so this instruction will be having some uh, address so that address is represented by the name p1 here so you may write p1 or you may write here 2000 also so this 2000 is representing the address of the first instruction of your subroutine so what is subroutine similar to my concept of function in high level language in high level language we used to call function in assembly language term in low level we call it as your subroutine so call 2000 that means go to the instruction uh, whose address is at 2000 only not this much is sufficient one more thing we need to do we'll go here definitely we'll go here because of this call we are not going to execute this one but we need to keep a provision that after my function is over i should be able to come back to 1004 and how can you go to p1 by changing the value of pc yes or no by changing the value of pc only you can go to p1 right and by the time you are executing what is the value of pc 1004 hope you remember that because by the time you are fetching the instruction pc will be pointing to the next instruction in sequence so pc will be having 1004 that is the address of your next instruction but now you don't want to execute the next instruction rather you want to execute the instruction whose address is part of your instruction current instruction so what you will be doing this value of pc whenever you are executing this pc value is what 1004 so this 1004 i'll save somewhere i'll store somewhere safely so that somewhere i'll store it safely 1004 and then only i will change pc with a new value that is nothing but 2000 where from i'll get this 2000 from the address field of my call instruction from the address field of my this instruction so that will give me 2000 that 2000 i will load into pc then only the next instruction cycle will start from address 2000 that is from this instruction you are getting me or not see this one is there so see whenever see i said that whenever we are executing this that time pc has already become 1004 so this 1004 i need to store somewhere safely that safe place is nothing but your stack because there are a lot of regions are there because function calls may be nested so in the reverse order you will return right due to that stack will be the base uh, data structure to store the return addresses this is nothing but my return address whenever i will complete my function my return address is this one once you suppose from home you are coming to college or you are going to some institute so you will go there once classes are over where you will come back to your home only so this address is uh, this address i need to store somewhere safely right in my coding so that somewhere is nothing but stack so in the stack where do you store something on the top of the stack store means what push operation so where push operation can be done at the stack top only right so what i will do stack top only i will perform a push operation what i will push content of pc what is right now content of pc 1004 so 1004 will be stored onto the stack and after that only pc will be ad loaded with the address of the subroutine where from i'll get it from the address field of my this instruction and already you know what is address field and all because we have done so many numerical on instruction format and all so instructions one part is for holding the address field so this address field value will be loaded into pc so thereby i am moving to my function whose uh, starting address is represented by the name p1 right this is how call instruction is executed and one more thing please understand these two lines will not be done by you and me as a programmer this will be done as part of instruction execution of this 
as part of this call instruction execution everything will be done automatically that means this push operation we are not going to write autom ourselves the instruction call instruction itself will do all these push and pc will be loaded with the new value of your that means the starting address of your subroutine done then the next one is return so return instruction is used to return from a subroutine so what is this return from subroutine instruction is required see you are calling a function p1 say p1 starting address is represented by 2000 here some instructions are there one after another you are executing or in some loop you are doing at the end suppose here return instruction is there so whenever return instruction is executed then you are supposed to return back to your caller who was your caller this part was your caller so where should you return back to 1000 or 1004 1000 is already executed due to that only you have arrived at p1 so now when you return where you will go you will go to the next address of this my call instruction so uh, where is that address that address where we have saved on the stack top so from the stack top we'll take the value of pc that part is done as part of execution of your return instruction so see what this return instruction does whenever you execute this return instruction no operand nothing is required only simply you write return when you write return then as part of execution whatever is there on the top of the stack i don't know what is there it, uh, it is my assumption that already on top my uh, return address is there right so that whatever content on the top of the stack that time is found that will be given to the pc so due to that whenever you call a function inside the function whenever you are using stack you need to be very very careful so that you should not manipulate your return address which is stored on the stack otherwise you will not be able to go back to your caller right this i'll explain again in my uh, upcoming videos where we'll discuss in uh, greater details about stack and function calls and all so at, as of now simply understand return instruction it, if it is executed then whatever is there on the top of the stack right now my assumption is that it is my return address that will be loaded into pc and by loading a new value into pc i'll be going back to my caller because here it is not physical jump it is these are my logical jump so how these logical jumps are happening by changing the value of pc so hope this call and return instruction is understood these two are very very important instruction how they are functioning call will take you to a new function uh, will take you to a subroutine and before going to the subroutine you are going to store the return address and then only load the address of this subroutine into your pc and while returning whatever is there on the top of the stack that will be loaded into pc so this much is there in this video we have left with uh, two more instructions that i am i will be explaining in my next video till then thank you so much and if you are uh, getting from my explanations then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you